All right, we got our Carolina rig set up on our BFS rod. That's the bait right there. But the most important thing, is it gonna float? That's the most important thing, making sure it floats. Oh no. Oh, oh, that was a big one. Oh wait, maybe it's still on there. Yep, it's on there. We on. Oh, this is a big one. What's good, y'all? All right, so today's video, I'm gonna try to be as informative as I possibly can. So what we're gonna do is, we come up. We are at. Let me get my wallet. They got it. So in this video, the goal is to give you as much information as possible. So now, one thing that's important, I'm gonna give you the most important things. When you come out here, you're ready to walk. All right, so let's open up our watch and I'm going to go to, uh, I guess like the fitness tracker and I'm going to like put, we're gonna go on a, a hike. And so, or you know, just a walk. Yeah, let's do a walk. We're gonna do a walk and we'll see by the end of today, we're gonna see how many miles I did today. So that's the only thing you need to know when you come to Irvine. Also only $5 to park, no fishing license needed, plenty of fish in here. You just gonna have to walk or ride your bike. A lot of people come out here with their bike, but I'm gonna bring my BFS setup at uh, Cast King Zephyr. I got that good old Walmart special, that $10 rod and reel combo. I'm gonna use that to bait and wait. And then I'm going with my, uh, Bass Pro Shop set up. That's that, we are set, let's grab what we want. So the one thing about Ir the one thing about Irvine is you got until 4 p.m. to get done what you're getting done. If you don't do it by then, they kicking you out. So just, just be mindful of that. Don't be showing up at three o'clock thinking, oh yeah, I just get a little something in. Anywhere you go is gonna be a little walk to get there. So, <laughs> like I said, just, you know, get here as soon as you can. Give yourself enough time to get to the spot and get back because they will be expecting you to be on your way out by four. All right, let's put this stuff in our pocket. And we are about ready to go. So I think we got about two hours to fish. Every time I come here, I only got a couple hours to fish because I be trying to do other stuff in the day, you know. I ain't trying to be out here all day, but I like being out here. But anyway. We got our backpack. Oh, and I got a little stool, got a little chair. So, all the things to consider. Make sure when you pack, pack whatever you're willing to carry for about at least three, four miles. All right, y'all, so as you can see, from week to week, the water levels continue to change here at uh, Irvine. I remember coming here and the water was all the way up here. Now you can, the, the trail to get to the east shore, whatever shore, that you're, whatever shore that is over there, you had to go all the way around. Now, there's a path right here for the east shore. We're going to the west shore. Look, it's all muddy, all muddy. But we're gonna go to the west shore. We're gonna walk. <laughs> we about to walk. I, I feel like, man, it's probably like, at least like, at least a mile, maybe like a like two miles down the way. I don't know exactly how far it is, but I got my Apple Watch on. I got my watch on tracking how far it is. So we're gonna see how far the walk it is by the end of this video. And another thing is, you can check out the path, smooth path. Some people, a lot of people come out here with their bikes and uh, all kinds of crap. Another thing that's good to have is some, some boots that you can get muddy. See all the mud. You go run into that in the random spots where you think it's clean. It's, it's, it's clean till you get there. So it is fishing, you know, you're not expected to stay clean the whole time, but um, you might not be expecting to walk in probably like uh, ankle deep mud either. So prepare accordingly. 
here's the lake, y'all. Water level's always changing. The water level changed since uh, uh, last time, right, T? Yep. Like, I remember the water's probably like, where are you sitting right now, right? Wasn't it? Shout out to Mr. T. T, T, Titus, he's hooking us up with some, some Carolina red gear. So I think we're gonna go with a, a white and pink. Which, which mice tail you said? Um, orange. I see it. Dang. See, Titus is prepared. He said he's got everything in his box. He got everything. Uh, Quarter so ounce. Yesterday by himself, he went all the way down on the east shore down to the rope. He caught. Yeah. Oh, he got two. He said, I'm a professional. I don't need help. I'm a pro at this. All right. I need to hurry up to get out there because everybody's getting bit. So, yeah. doing a Carolina rig. You do the weight first, do a bead after. Do about, do about uh, eight to ten inches. Hey, Titus, you wouldn't believe this. I got a double. I believe it. After, <laughs> you had to wait, what, two hours? Two hours for two darn fish. Like, uh... You say about an eight-inch leader? Yeah, eight to ten. Eight to ten-inch leader? That's the tips from the pro right there. That's for him, man. He, he fishes for six or eight, and he's going to smash them. Yeah. Right? <laughs> I was, if he was fishing by us, then we're You're next, Titus. All right, all I have is this a four pound floral. Remember, you want to have a small hook, a hook thin enough and small enough to uh, so that it will float, it won't weigh your bait down. Without a super long leader, let's go ahead and put this in. Doing a Palomar knot right here. Whoop de whoop. Baiting and waiting is not usually my thing, but it used to be. Bam, just like that. Cut off the tag in. I got I got some razor hooks in there too. Okay. I got some of those. I got the light wire hooks. Yeah, they, they hold the they hold the plastic up high in the water. Do you a have time ago I used to fish with the other one, the guy goes, You gotta get rid of those hooks. Yeah. Just dragging. The light wire hooks is very important. Do you have any spray, like on a scent? I have a. Right here. Oh, okay. Right there. I had it down there. I'll it down there. This, is, this is a longer leader than he said, but I already tied it. Uh, we'll put a little spray on it, see what's up. That's the one you got for 10 bucks. $10. $10 combo right here. Right there, Brian. You got a $10 combo right there in his hand. At Walmart. Walmart special. Let's see if we. I don't feel like I'm gonna be able to cast it very far, but it's all right. You're just out straight, right, Titus? Yeah. That didn't cross you, did I? No. Now that the pole is out, a lot of people just put a bobber, some kind of indicator on, on their line, so that when the bobber raises up, so you got a bite. Oh, that's a nice one. You need a net? Do you have one? Where is it? Oh, that's it. Well, I got mine. I got it. Oh, okay. Yeah. Nice. That's the way it happens, that's why they call it fishing. <laughs> uh oh. Oh, dang, I dropped you. I thought so. Yep. I'm 
Come on. Pinch crawler. Wait, oh, I lost him. Yeah. Oh, no, he's still on there. Wait, I don't know. I think he's off. That's off. Gotta be off. Oh, no, he's on there. Oh, okay. He's finally fighting. Oh, a little lightning. Yeah. Uh-oh. <laughs> Under Titus' stringer. Come on, come back here. A little lightning. Ooh, a little 10-pound. A little $10 rod. Little lightning. Purdy. Look at him. Beautiful. Purdy, purdy. So $10 rod, like I said, y'all. We were just talking about lightning. Look what we got, y'all. Uh-oh, uh-oh. Power of the bait and weight. Little Carolina rig, $10 rod from Walmart. And thanks to Brian, he hooked me up with some Brian and Titus. Titus hooked it up with the gear for the Carolina rig, and Brian hooked it up with the bait. It's a, uh, some kind of power bait. Pinch worm. Pinch worm. So we're doing a catch and cook today, y'all. A little lightning. I have a feeling it's gonna be pretty damn good. It's coming through again. Come on. It always pays to be good to people because then they're gonna be good to you. Yeah, yeah. All right, we got our Carolina rig set up on our BFS rod. That's the bait right there. But the most important thing, is it gonna float? That's the most important thing, making sure it floats. Oh no! Oh, oh! That was a big one. Oh wait, maybe it's still on there. Crap. Yep, it's on there. We on. Oh, this is a big one. $10 rod. Dang. Now, came off. Came off. Damn it. The, the... Oh, no, it's still there. Dang. Dang. Yeah, pop the line. The thing about this $10 rod, the drag is trash. The drag is trash. It's trying to take, oh, open up the drag, but, ah. But anyway, <laughs> like I was saying, the most important thing is making sure that bait's gonna float. Sheesh. Oh no! Look what happened. Damn it! Damn! Crap. Yeah, it's convenient. It's very convenient, but. Cast out as far as I can, and there we go. All right, we got another one. Now I gotta continuously loosen this drag. Now it's flowing in towards me, okay. Gotta keep the tension. I don't know what that is, it's bigger. When I feel like it went around, I gotta pull the line out because... The stick is on there, huh? Yeah, wrapped up around the stick. That could have been the reason why I lost the first one. Okay. Oh, 
Could have been what happened. Baiting and waiting. We made it back to the house, and so basically, it's really keeping it very simple. The thing I like about uh, rainbow trout, they're one of the easiest fish to clean, in my opinion. Because all you really got to do, is scale them. You don't, sometimes you don't need to scale them because the scales are so small. But you can just basically what you do is you get a spoon, a, a butter knife, a fork, whatever you want to do. They have special uh, scaling tools too, but basically you just lay down, scrape towards the head. Little lightning, very small compared to the other ones that we caught. That's the the slime coat on them that helps them swim through the water faster, uh, better, and help them move around better. And that's the reason why a lot of people say you shouldn't grab a a fish or trout or whatever with a piece like a towel, any kind of cloth. Or put them on a concrete because it messes up the the slime that coats their scales or coats everything. It messes it up, messes the fish up. They'll die eventually. So basically, when you're handling these things and you plan on releasing them, you should wet your hands first and then touch them with your wet hands and hold them gently. They'll go free without dying. So anyway, let's take a spoon or whatever and. From the tail, scrape up towards the head. Man, you see how these are, these cups, scales are so small? Like, usually if there was any other fish, these things would be pop, 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 popping everywhere. And those are the scales. You see that? So you guys can see. But just scraping these scales off like that, and then I'm going to rinse it off. Some people, they don't even bother scaling the, the trout, between trout Trout and salmon, they don't even bother. They just uh, they just uh, fry them up with the scales on. Maybe add a little bit more, a little more texture. Put some calcium in there, you know, get, you know, get a little extra calcium. But that's not what we're doing. We're gonna scrape this off. I mean, oh, viewer's discretion advised. Damn, this, is a, this knife is dull as hell. Okay. Shouldn't cut near you, cut towards your hand, but anyway. Cut this like that. Now, I'm gonna put this bag right here just so I can drop all the insides in there. Basically, clean. Cut this down right here. This is like the bloodline. So, you just actually, I don't know what that is, but you wanna cut this out. Cut down the middle and then scrape it out with a spoon. And then you give it a good rinse. And pretty much you're done. So you got your lightning trout ready to cook. Didn't have enough time in the same day to cook the fish, so we're cooking it today. I'm gonna chop the head off. I'm gonna chop the tail off, and I'm gonna boil that and make it make it like a um, I don't like a fish broth for Zeus because the the boy loves some freaking fish fish juices on his on his dog food. So gonna chop the tail, chop the head, boil it up, leave that for Zeus. And um, I'm gonna make like a zucchini pasta. I've seen it on TV and uh, I feel like I want some pasta, some noodles or something like that. So I'm just gonna use this thing right here. It's baked like a mandolin or whatever it is. You put it in there, you twist it and you make noodles out of it. And this thing is pretty cool. I don't remember where I got it from or how much it is. The only thing I know is you best to be careful when it comes to these, uh, them, there, them blades right there. They'll, they'll cut you. So make sure you don't get your hand in there. I like to use a thick side, you know. I go with a thickness. So this hand off like so. Boop. Then you take this piece and you stick it on there like that. And then you can twist it. But to start off, I'm just going to twist it like that. Boop, boop, like that. Twist that sucker. Making noodles. Now, I don't know how true it is, but I asked Siri, and Siri told me that a zucchini, like the average size zucchini, has five calories in it. So I'm right now, bad. you see the pasta? 
Once it get this low, I use this, grab it there and you just twist. That way you don't have to worry about cutting your hand. So you use this handle. So you don't risk cutting your hand on this mandolin. And my sister actually cut her finger and it, when she was trying to wash one, something like this, and it cut the head. So like basically sliced her finger open. So be careful. Like so, you got zucchini pasta. I like to kind of stir fry it, so that's what I'm gonna do. And season the noodles first. Granulated onion, sprinkle some of that on there, some of this seasoning. And I'm not gonna go too heavy. I don't know if you ever heard of a place called Kava, but their sauces be bomb. So I got some of that sauce and I'm gonna put it on this. Give it a little bit of spray. I'm gonna go ahead and go in with my pasta. A bigger pan, <laughs> a bigger skillet might be very helpful, but just using what I got right now. Now, honestly, I kind of like it to be look like like al dente, like not cooked too hard. So, just got this fire on like this. Just gonna I just wanted to cook a little bit, get it a little bit brown, and then I'm gonna be done with it. If you cook it too much, it'll get kind of mushy. But I like I like it with that texture. It's like a it's like a noodle, like legit, you know. But if you cook it too much, it'll be kind of mushy. So, I'm done. So if you didn't get a good view in the last video, check out how bright um, the meat is. Look at that, that's like a bright, I mean, it's not a wild trout. You know, some, <laughs> there's been a lot of people that's like commenting, oh, it's a stock fish. Duh, it's a stock fish. And it's, 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 my, it's my business if I want to cook it or not. Same way as somebody's business if they want to cook a bass or not. But it's my business to release the bass. Either way, some people in the comments be crazy. Cut the head off for Zeus, for Zeus. And this is for me. I left it. Mm. I'll cut him in half. Yeah, whoops. Check that out. That looks good to me. Put some paprika. Now I'm gonna do the same thing to the other side. Flip him over. Put some of that good on there. Flip them over, put some of that good on there. Put it on the inside. I'm not gonna lie to you. I do not have a time that I leave one side on. I flip it when I feel like it. That smells kind of good, y'all. Ooh, you like that double flip. Double flip. It looked like a Charizard that skin a little bit, but it's okay. I like it like that. All right, now, so we're basically done. I charred the skin a little bit. So we're going to go ahead and remove it from the pan, put it on the plate, and give it a little taste. All right, so here we are. There it is. All right, there we go. It's not as crispy as I wanted it to be, but it's okay. Let's go ahead and give it a taste. Now, this is the sauce that I was telling you about. Um, if you have any tips, any suggestions on recipes, ways to cook the fish, what other kind of side dishes that you think will be good, let me know. So I'm gonna go ahead and put this stuff on the pasta, a little bit on the fish, and give it a try. 
Yeah. That'll get mixed in real good. See, look, that looks like pasta. You can't say it don't look like pasta. Amen. You know, one thing, people are, people are very scared about eating trout because of the bones. But look, look how it comes right off. That whole piece came off. There's a little bone here, but you could just pick that right out. Look how steamy it is. Hmm. Well, that's good. It's real soft. What the hell? Hey, that's pretty good. That's really good. And it comes right off the bone. You may get a little bone here and there, but it ain't nothing to worry about. Hmm. Let's say, I think there is a difference between like these Mount Lassen trout versus the DFG trout, the trout that you'll get from the Department of Fishing Game. Like it, it does taste better. Like it's softer. Um, could be the way I cooked it too. Maybe my cooking skills just got a little bit better, but let's try this pasta. Mm -hmm. That's pretty good too. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> By the way, that, that sugar, it's a little spicy. Oh, that little Charizard with the skin tastes pretty good. It looked a little burnt, but it tastes good. But, you know, hey, I'm going to work on my lighting, but anyway. Hmm. Mm-hmm. Now, look how the bones come out. Just be a little gentle, like this. You know, oh, just like the cartoons. Look at that, the bone come right out. All right, so that's about it. So if you want to continue to support the channel, thank you to everybody that's been like rocking with me for for so long. Um, hopefully you try these this little zucchini thing. It's actually pretty good. And if what Google says is true, it's only about five calories. And the trout is very good. Why, like why go to the store and spend, I don't know, like $6, $5 a pound for trout when you could go catch you a freaking 10 pounder or a couple couple three pounders for the free or for the for 20 bucks, however, $10, however much it costs to get into the lakes. And then there's a lot of lakes out there where you don't have to pay anything to get in there. Kind of like Lake Irvine, $5 a park, Leave out of there with five fish like this. The taste pretty damn good. For all of you that stuck around this long, thanks for watching. I appreciate you. Please like, share, subscribe, leave a comment down below. Like always, if I don't see you out in the water, catch you next video. Peace out. We're good.